Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorials on my YouTube channel, Python for Microscopist. In the previous tutorial, I talked about malarial cell classification using convolutional neural networks. And it was a classification problem where you can classify your images into one of many classes, okay? In the previous example, it was just either a parasitized malarial cell or a healthy malarial cell, okay? So it was a, classif uh, a classic classification problem. Now, in this tutorial, I'm gonna talk about segmentation problem using deep learning, okay? So this is image segmentation using an architecture called UNIT. And this tutorial is about basically explaining what UNIT is and the series of these tutorials basically covers how we can uh, uh, start understanding UNIT, you know, and then coding it in Python and then applying it on uh, a real life uh, example. So as I just mentioned, UNIT is a special type of architecture for image segmentation purposes. And when I say architecture, that means an arrangement of uh, the, the deep learning tools that we are familiar with, like uh, convolutional layer, for example, and max pooling, you know, uh, take these tools, arrange them in such a way that the result would be image segmentation. I'm not going to talk about what a convolutional layer is and all of this, uh, which I've already done in one of the previous videos. And of course, you can Google search or I should say search on YouTube where you can find excellent videos talking about this. So I'll just mention certain terms and please dig into these uh, at, at your convenience. So uh, but just a quick reminder. OK, so here you see a special arrangement of various uh, uh, various convolutional layers and max pooling layers uh, to achieve certain tasks, okay? Uh, in this case, I don't think this has any special name, but there are various architectures where uh, people put together, you know, these, these into special arrangement and uh, they became a bit uh, famous. Now, uh, looking at this example, as you can see, the first layer here is just an input layer. It's called an input layer. And you see the depth of this or the number of dimensions in this direction is three, which typically means it's a color image, right? So you have RGB channels. So you have, uh, uh, going back to this example, you have 224 pixels in X, 224 pixels in Y. So this is a 224 by 224 by three image. So this is my input layer. This is what's going into my convolutional neural network in this example. And the next layer, that actually dimensions changed from three to 96 because there are 96 filters apparently right here, digital filters that are applied to this image. So uh, now we have 96 copies, or I shouldn't say 96 copies, 96 convolutional responses of uh, this input image. And uh, that makes up this uh, next layer. Okay, and again, a convolutional is uh, nothing but a matrix multiplication and the dimensions may change like from 224 to some other dimension uh, down here, depending upon how much padding you add to the image and so on, okay? And max pooling is again, uh, now you apply in this example, five by five matrix and you actually run it along the image or along this matrix. And now you can actually move this five by five matrix by one step, in which case it's called the stride equals to one, or you can move it by two, three, four, five, right? So the stride can be any number. And that also defines the dimensions of this output layer or, or the output image over here. OK, so uh, again, the dimensions are increasing here, uh, continuously increasing and then decreasing over there. And finally, here you have the dense layers and the output over there. So this is a quick overview of, uh, you know, uh, the convolutional layers in this case, or I should say our neural network. Now, this is a very confusing, busy image. And there's a reason why I put this together, because uh, uh, you can see some of the famous architectures that are out there. You probably heard of AlexNet and VGG. Before those, uh, Lenet was kind of famous. And uh, then Google Lenet, a bit more complicated, as you can see. Inception v3, quite recent, I should say. Inception bn. These are uh, the uh, recent ones. I believe both are by uh, Google. But as you can see, there are different architectures. And we can put together our own architecture because no one single architecture is great for all types of problems. Depending on what type of problem uh, we're working on, we can actually put together our own uh, you know, neural network, our own architecture. We can design our own. Now, the question is, how do we design our own? Of course, there are people who are getting PhDs working on these type of topics. 
okay so if you just want to use this as a tool to segment your images then uh, I think we can still do that we don't need to uh, be the architects of uh, uh, neural networks okay so uh, now I picked this VGG because that's uh, again uh, a relatively famous a lot of people are using VGG if you look at how many people use Linux how many papers are out there on these VGG is probably the one that has uh, the most number of papers in fact I saw a bubble chart where it actually reflects that now VGG 19 again just a quick uh, uh, example okay so initially you have your convolutional layers and then max pool layer and then another couple of convolutional layers max pool again convolutional max pool and so on and finally the dense layers here and the output layer over there okay and the dense layer is called dense because here this is where you have uh, again I explained this in the previous tutorial but where you have a whole bunch of neurons uh, that are connected to each other okay so uh, to code this I mean you can actually I believe there is a library that you can call like for VGG 19 uh, but if you want to code this like line by line it should be pretty uh, straightforward okay so you start by defining okay convolutional layer one then uh, what is the what you know uh, what are the parameters for this convolutional layer and then two and then we are defining uh, the max pool layer uh, right here and then the max pool layer goes as the input to the next convolutional layer and so on okay as you can see after convolutional five now we are entering into this dense layer and uh, here is where dense layer is defined again there are multiple ways of writing this code but I'm just showing you an example code that I literally copied off uh, uh, a Google search result okay so this is VGG 19 again the, the point here I'm trying to make is there are various architectures VGG 19 is one of those and as you can see you can put together this architecture yourself if you know how the structure looks like and you can modify this you should modify this to make sure you're uh, you're putting together the best network for the problem that you're trying to solve now unit architecture is designed for semantic segmentation okay unit is again one of these architectures that's designed for semantic segmentation what is semantic segmentation again you look at uh, uh, when you search for unit you'll probably run into this term semantic segmentation just to give you a quick introduction uh, let's say we have an image like this and if you have a bounding box around each individual in this example then this is typically the object detection if you have a bunch of cells in an image if you put bounding box around each cell or a particle if you are looking at particles then it is an object detection okay now if you actually paint the pixels corresponding to humans in this image then that is semantic segmentation where every pixel either represents a human or a background or I should say a non-human okay so uh, a person or a non-person okay or the background so here every pixel is painted okay so this is semantic segmentation and unit is designed to do exactly this task now to take it to the next level once we actually do this now if you can separate each individual like as person one person two three four five then this is called instant segmentation and this is an extension uh, uh, of semantic segmentation in a way okay so again this is the task we are trying to achieve with unit so how does it look like again don't be worried about this confusing uh, or if it if the slide is too busy don't worry about it and here is the link of course you can always google search for a unit and find this original paper uh, by by these uh, uh, I forgot the name I believe uh, the uh, you know the paper was uh, by Olaf Rona Berger R O N N E B E R G E R so uh, these are the ones who actually published this and the original intention the original reason why they have actually came up with this architecture was uh, for biomedical image segmentation okay so uh, again it's called unit as you can tell because it looks like you okay that's exactly why it's called uh, unit and the architecture itself contains two paths okay the path on the left where it's uh, it's uh, 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 I mean it's called contraction path okay and uh, it's also called the encoder path and on the right this is the expansion or the expanding or the decoder path okay uh, and uh, in between as you can see this data from here for example is concatenated with this one so this and that are put together uh, 
and and this con this is exactly what gives uh, the benefit or the concatenation of these feature maps is the reason why we get localized information, uh, what it makes a semantic segmentation uh, possible using UNET. Again, you can read more about this uh, if you're curious. You know, My intention is to make sure you understand at a high level what it is and how to use it for your image segmentation. Okay. Now, uh, let me actually, uh, I mean, the example that they used, they used an input image of 572 by 572 and so on. You can see that, okay, uh, then they used 64 uh, features and so on, but uh, we can modify this, okay? And we can write our own code. In fact, I would like to modify because the, the network architecture as it is, is okay, but then the parameters that are used did not work very well for the cell segmentation that I was trying to do. So I uh, experimented with this. In fact, I did a lot of Google search and found like how others actually did it. And then obviously there is nothing wrong in copying what others did if it's saving you a lot of time. Obviously proper acknowledgement of those guys is uh, definitely necessary. But then after all of that, I realized, okay, this is probably what works for the cell segmentation example I'm gonna show you in the next uh, uh, two, three, four parts of this video. So let's look at uh, the top left, because this is where the input layer is. And my input image, let's actually take all of our images and resize them to 128 by 128. And these are color images, so 128 by 128 by 3. This would be all of my input image dimensions, and they go into the input layer. And then let's uh, add a feature 16, feature space of 16. So the images will be the output of this layer that we are calling C1 would be 128 by 128 by 16, okay? And these are convolutional operations right there. And the convolutional operations, it's three by three matrix that we are using here, and or the kernel size, three by three. And we are going to code it as padding equals to same. What that basically means is add extra pixels on the edges because when you run a three by three convolution, how does it treat edge pixels? Right at the edge pixels, we need to do something. So it adds an extra pixels to the edges. So the output image is same as the input image. That's exactly what padding equals to same means. Make my output image same dimensions as the input image. Otherwise, depending on your kernel size here, you may have a smaller image uh, uh, as the output image. Again, nothing wrong with that. There are various strategies that people use, but this is exactly what uh, uh, I chose to do here. Then, the next step is the max pooling step of using two by two and stride two. Max pooling, again, I explained uh, it to you uh, in one of the previous videos. It's nothing but put a two by two matrix and then within that, p select the maximum values and replace that two by two matrix with that maximum value. So that's exactly the operation that we are gonna do where we get down to this stage and then the dimensions here would be half of this, 128, half of that because we are using a two by two. Uh, with a stride two. So this becomes 64 by 64 by 16 uh, right there. And then two convolutional operations, which means uh, with a, a, again, feature space of 32. So it becomes 64 by 64 by 32. So we'll repeat this process again, all the way until we get down here. Okay, so as you can see down here, the dimensions are now eight by eight by 128 and uh, 8 by 8 by 256 up here. So now we are going to upsample exactly symmetric path as we got down, except we are going up now. Now we are doing this upsampling. Very similar parameters again, two by two. The only difference now is the result of this upsampling is like this box right there with a uh, this box would be, uh, I forgot to add it here. This box would be 16 by 16 by 128. Yeah, because we are going from eight to 16 over there. Okay, and then it's two by two. So this would be 16 by 16 by 128. To that, we are going to add C4. Okay, so this block is nothing but U6 plus C4. Okay, that plus this little thing. Okay, hopefully I'm not confusing you. So basically these two individual rectangles represent each of 16 by 16 by 128. When you add it, it becomes 16 by 16 by 256. Okay, and then it goes through a couple of convolutional uh, steps. So the result here would be 16 by 16 by 128. Now we upsample again, two by two. 
Again, now we have two boxes, each with 32 by 32 by 64. You add them, which becomes 32 by 32 by 128. Okay, so that's basically the steps here. So up sample, concatenate. Okay, add these two. So this one plus that one. U7 plus C, uh, C3 over there. Same thing. Keep going up, keep going up all the way. And finally, the final output would be the convolutional layer with uh, one over there. So 128 by 128 by one. Okay. In between these steps, in between especially the convolutional steps from here to there, we are going to drop out which means randomly select, I don't know if the dropout is 0.1, randomly select 10% of these and then just drop, okay? 10% of the pixels and then just drop them from any of these uh, uh, calculations. And why would we want to do that? Well, it's typically used to prevent overfitting, okay? So let's do that as uh, part of this. And uh, how do we code this? Like you saw earlier for VGG, this is very similar, right? So here I put some code. Again, I'm not going to go through each line, but basically C1, P1, right? So if I go back, so C1 right there, which is nothing but two convolutional operations. So C1 is convolutional operation with the uh, uh, dimensions of 16 and 3 by 3. Exactly, dimensions of 16 and my convolutional is 3 by 3. And we are using ReLU as our activation in this example. Yeah. Uh, activation uh, as ReLU, okay? And padding equals to same. So that's C1. And then P1, now we define that as max pooling two by two. Apply it on C1, okay? So two by two, max pooling, and apply this onto the incoming uh, data, which is nothing but coming from C1. This is it. So, and then we do two convolutionals and then one max pool, two convolutionals, one max pool, and we may add some dropouts like 20% uh, here and so on. Now, finally, when we get to the output layer, now we have uh, the optimizer. And then uh, you see down here, I'm going to explain, again, I did explain this in uh, my previous videos, but later on when we start coding this, I'm gonna explain you know, that there are a few choices for optimizer, Adam seems to be the best one, and uh, the loss function is what the optimizer is uh, trying to minimize, and uh, the metrics that we keep track of uh, uh, as, the, as the algorithm progresses is uh, accuracy. So this is, this is it and repeat this step for each and every layer and there you go we'll have our unit okay so in the next tutorial let's actually start uh, uh, defining our unit in keras in python using keras uh, uh, api and uh, and then followed by that let's uh, go ahead and start understanding the data that we are going to work with and then implement it uh, right away Okay, so thank you very much for your attention and I hope you like this tutorial. If so, please go ahead and subscribe to my channels and let's meet in the next tutorial.